<laughs> All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Where'd you get that? Oh, back the Guinness, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, back back of the bar. See Julia. She'll take care of it. I see where everybody's at. How's? Hmm? All right, Julia, can we get this man again us? <laughs> All right, it's my favorite drink. I like the dark beers. So, um, got a lot of my friends here tonight. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I, uh, everybody, every group of friends has that friend that comes with a warning sign. If you don't know who it is in your group of friends, it's probably you. In my group of friends, it's definitely me. So anybody here that knows this will attest to that. Uh, I gotta be honest with you guys, I haven't been doing comedy for very long, but I've been an asshole my whole life. So this is a great fit. I, uh, but, so I used to uh, get uninvited from parties all the time because I would offend people and now I finally found an outlet where I can offend everyone at once. <laughs> so this is great. Uh, but before you know, I was doing comedy, I had, I had other dreams and goals. Uh, back in high school when the, when the high school guidance counselor would ask me, what do you want to do with your life? This is the legit answer that I gave her. I said that I want a job, something in, in business, where I wear a suit and make good money, but in reality, I just, I wanna act all important and do nothing. <laughs> and they always tell you to be careful what you wish for, because my wish came true. That job is called pharmaceutical sales. <laughs> so everybody wants to be in pharmaceutical sales because they don't know what it is. I'll sum it up for you, so in a nutshell, Pharmaceutical sales is a combination between the old ladies in the grocery store handing out cracker samples and talking your way out of a traffic ticket at the same time. So um, things, are, uh, things are going okay at work. I mean, it's a little questionable. We might have uh, layoffs on the horizon, but don't feel bad for me. If I get laid off, I get a severance package. If you guys don't know what a severance package is, it's when they pay you not to work there. Some of you could use a severance package to get out of your parents' house in the form of first month rent and security deposit. I don't know about you though, I would never say no to free money. I haven't been this excited to hear the words, I have a package for you, outside of a porno. Some of you knew where that joke was headed. So um, I've been interviewing uh, and in interviewing I, I learned that I wouldn't hire myself either. <laughs> I, had a, I had a manager tell me, he's like, I want somebody that'll get out there early in the morning and go hunt for the business. I was like, whoa, man, you lost me at morning. <laughs> I, uh, I had an interview, I, I showed up 30 minutes late to a 45 minute interview. Yep. That's my style. You know what? I so my uh, my and they. You know what? They actually they still moved me forward, and I said, well, "How bad were the other candidates?" So my uh, my father-in-law, he's you know honorable man, ran a factory, and uh, he's got a saying that if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. And my saying is, if I'm 15 minutes late, I'm early. <laughs> It's true, yeah, it's true. Um, they do ask you really stupid questions during interviews. They, they ask you stupid things like, uh, what is your biggest weakness? And, uh, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't answer that question truthfully. You can't say, well, I'd, I'd like to show up late and leave early. <laughs> you have to fluff it up with some corporate BS. Like, I manage my time and tasks very wisely. There we go. Like, how well do you work with others? Well, I like to make fun of them and get them to do what I need them to do. <laughs> That's never gonna fly, so I have to say something like, oh, I work well with internal and external stakeholders to achieve a common goal. So that stuff works. Um, I don't know though, maybe the corporate world is not for me. I, uh, I've been thinking about you know, going into business and I got a couple of business ideas. You guys wanna hear them? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
Um, so, I, has anybody heard of the website Bring a Trailer? No. They sell they sell classic cars online. So everything's going online now, and it's classic and collector cars, and they've done so well. I actually I reached out to them and I pitched them an idea for a dating site because everything's going online. So I said, you should call your dating site, bring a trailer hooker. <laughs> I, uh, I want to start my own fudge bakery and call it Dutch Ovens. I'd like to start my own international massage parlor and call it Coming Together. <laughs> So I have, uh, I have kids, I have a boy and a girl, and they're great, love them very much. They've actually, so they've seen videos of me doing this. They've seen videos of me doing stand-up comedy, and they mock me. They grab, they grab my phone, my stand, they grab a little karaoke machine, and they pretend that they do stand-up comedy. And honestly, so, and their jokes are about butts and farts. <laughs> which is actually better than anything that I've ever written. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, I, you know, with my little boy, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I failed as a father. Um, he, uh, just a little while back, he was just learning how to go to the bathroom. And, you know, every guy in here knows this. Everybody knows about the two shake rule, right? Two shake rule. And my son had the hardest time grasping the two shake rule because instead of the two shake rule, he was, I'll show you. <laughs> Just beating that thing like it owed him money. <laughs> so, um. You know it's true because she's not even. <laughs> That's true, yeah. With my daughter, the, the goals are different. In the past, every father's goal was to keep the daughter off the pole, yep. right? Nowadays, it's to keep your daughter off of OnlyFans. <laughs> my better half is here tonight. <laughs> She's amazing, she's supportive, she's beautiful. I just hope one day my wife can meet her. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. I hope they never meet. So my, my wife actually, she's a hairstylist. And um, what, what's cool about, you know, the good thing and the bad thing about being a hairstylist is that anytime that we travel and we'll meet people, people will just, if she tells them she's a hairstylist, all of a sudden they want to talk about their hair. They're like, what should I do with my hair? And it's like, listen, we don't have enough time here. We're gonna need, uh, we're gonna need a few appointments to deal with that bird's nest on top of your head. So we've, uh, we've started a new thing recently that when we travel, we don't tell people that she's a hairstylist. We tell them that she's a financial planner. And we ask them how much money they make and that shuts them up pretty quickly. <laughs> So she, um, she runs a salon and, and it's great. I love the salon. Um, I, I call the salon, my nickname for the salon is the Piranha Tank. <laughs> and that's because, you know, anything that I throw in there gets eaten. So let's say if I drop by with some cookies, eaten. If I drop by with some lunch, eaten. A girl with a weak personality, also eaten. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we recently introduced a, uh, a 401k, you know, the savings plan, state's mandating it now, and uh, some of the reactions were, 401k? You better give me all my money, K. <laughs> That's a better savings plan. I, uh, I had a lady call the other day, um, sometimes the calls come to my son, and she wanted a free haircut for her son. She, she wanted to see if we would do a haircut for a charity. And uh, so, you know, she, she comes in and, and we cut her hair, we cut the son's hair, and then she, she didn't like it and she wanted her money back. I said, you know what, this haircut was free. And she said, I know, I don't like it, I would like some money. So that's, that's the kind of people we deal with. Um, dating, anybody in here on a date? Yeah. yeah, all right. <laughs> Dating's kind of tough. I think that dating is a lot like shopping for cars on Craigslist. The, the good ones go fast, and the ones that are left will leave you broke and broken. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, it's tough nowadays. 
Uh, see, for me though, I'm retired from the game. This old player can no longer play. I can only coach. I'm not allowed to set foot on the game court. If I do, I'm gonna end up in court with my wife. But uh, the, the hardest thing about dating, what I don't understand about dating, anybody in here ever been ghosted? Yeah, you've been ghosted. Okay, so to me, I don't understand ghosting. I don't understand why anyone would give up the satisfaction to tell someone what they really think of them. <laughs> if it was me, I think I would treat it like a business deal on Shark Tank. I would say something like, you have a really hot body and a face that I can tolerate. <laughs> But you are mean to the Uber driver and the waiter, so for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> dating is tough, dating is tough. I know it's, um, and, and you know what else is hard is like, women expect us to read signs, you know what I mean? When, when girls are interested, they're like, oh, he missed the signs. It's like, well, you know what? We missed the signs because every guy in here has been burned by the signs. We all had that one friend that will like sit on your lap and kiss you in the mouth and you go to ask her out, she'll tell you something like, oh, I just think of you more as a brother. <laughs> and if that's how you treat your brother, we've got other issues. So uh, one of my friends was uh, dating somebody that, um, you know, most people date someone that finishes their sentences. One of my friends was dating someone that finished his meals. <laughs> now, that didn't go well. Um, but, uh, you know, let's talk about marriage a little bit. Uh, my younger friends have been getting married. My older friends know better. <laughs> so marriage, it's a, it's a very emotional time, you know, for, for the bride and groom. And years ago, I went to a wedding where I heard the maid of honor give the worst wedding speech that I've ever heard. She gets up she gets up there and she says, I've known you for a little for for a long time, too long, and you always copy me. <laughs> that was legit. That was the real speech. Uh, I didn't make that up. And and the bride had tears in her eyes, not because she was emotionally moved, but because that friendship was over. <laughs> the uh, the best man, on the other hand, the best man cannot cry at, at the wedding. If the best man cries at the wedding, he's going to lose his best man card. <laughs> There's only two men that are allowed to cry at the wedding. One is is the groom, and one the other one is the the father of the bride, and uh, because the father of the bride is giving away his beautiful problems <laughs> and the daughter. The groom cries for different reasons than most people think. Most people think that the groom cries because he sees this beautiful angel walking down the aisle. No, the groom cries because he just bet half of his stuff <laughs> on this relationship working out. Not just present stuff, future stuff too. So honestly, I think you'd have better luck putting all on red in Vegas. <laughs> Might be a bit more fun and cheaper too. The best, the best wedding advice I received was from a guy that was married and divorced twice. So he should have taken his own advice. But he said to me, he said, you can be right or you can be happy. You can't have both. So I took that advice to heart and there's just certain things that I no longer argue with my wife about. So for example, her, her wallet cost more than the money that she has in it. <laughs> her purse has the same name as an Italian gangster, Louie. Louie shook us down, we got nothing left. But, um, you know, I did, I did learn a couple of things while being married. I learned how to check other girls out and get away with it. <laughs> Yeah, I'll get into that right now. <laughs> you as well, yeah, you can try that later tonight. So what you do is when you see when you see a good looking girl, you go ahead and you stare at her. You stare at her confidently. Very confident. Eventually your wife is gonna catch you looking, and that's when you start talking shit about the girl that you're looking at. 
to say something like, ew, who cut her hair, a five-year-old? Where'd she get those boots, Payless shoes? And there's nothing more than women love than talking shit about other women. So eventually your wife is gonna join in and she's gonna say something like, why does she dress from Forever 21? She looks like she's Forever 42. <laughs> so by the time she catches on, and it's a big if she catches on, you got enough wank bank material for a week. <laughs> Do this right a couple of times, you can be an investment banker. You're welcome, sir. Go ahead and try that. How many years of marriage has it been already? Too many. Please. Too many? <laughs> Never too soon to teach an old dog new tricks. But I, I realized that I'm a dog. Huh? I've so, right, somehow I managed to offend someone. <laughs> and I haven't even gotten to the racial stuff yet. So. <laughs> it's good stuff. Uh, but um, I've learned that um, I, I don't understand women. I know nothing about women. We uh, we went out the other night with my my wife and her friend, and her friend was checking this guy out, and she's like, oh, he's attractive. And I was like, where's this dude? First of all, I couldn't see him because he was so small. It was just a just little white guy. And uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell what was so attractive about him. I thought he was pretty vanilla, but he had some tattoos, so vanilla with sprinkles. And uh, she's like, you know, he's mysterious. Like, mysterious? The only thing mysterious is what this guy does all day. I mean, for a job. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of hate going around out there lately. I don't like it. I don't think it's right. I don't think that we should hate other cultures. I think that we need to do the right thing and make fun of them. <laughs> you guys ever, anybody ever been to a, a, a Russian banquet hall? Yeah, yeah. you have? Yes. Awesome. The Asian's been to a Russian bank. <laughs> That's great. Uh, but anyway, if you've never been, it, it's a pretty good time. It's uh, They serve a great four-course meal consisting of vodka, 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 and vodka. Yeah, it's pretty good. And then there's food that you can no longer taste because you've had too much vodka. Does everybody know the rule when to stop drinking vodka? When the D disappears. When you're ordering vodka, you're done for <laughs> I told that joke to a group of gay guys, and they said, no, when we drink vodka, we get a lot of D. <laughs> I wish I hadn't gone there. But anyway, at the Russian banquet hall, they, uh, they, so these, they have these singers that, I don't know what they do during the week, like computer programmers or cab drivers, but somehow they, they think they can sing after all that vodka. And uh, they, uh, they'll ruin every song, even the simplest songs, like Happy Birthday, you know, and with the, with the thick Russian accent, it doesn't come out Happy Birthday, it comes out Happy Birthday to you. <laughs> so it sounds like Happy Barf Day. And, you know, after all that vodka, even if it's not your barf day, I promise you, it will be your barf day that day. You, um, you ever notice how uh, Filipino girls will always go for the biggest, whitest, dumbest looking guy in the room? The guy's so big and so white and so dumb he's got a permanent huh look on his face. A guy's so big and so white and so dumb it looks like the Navy drafted him right out of the frat house. I got another unpopular opinion. I think that, um, I think that Indian girls should date black guys. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Their kids would look like chocolate truffles. <laughs> so, I mean, Indian guys and black guys, they're actually, their skin color is somewhat similar. Yes. Similar, similar skin color, but they're actually the exact opposite. So Indian guys, great jobs, no confidence. Black guys, great confidence, no jobs. <laughs> You know who's more annoying than real Italians? Fake Italians. Everybody's got a friend like this, you know what I mean? They, they, um, they act all the time, they could be like German, Irish, Jewish, but they're overly dramatic. Sinatra's on the wall! Let me tell you something. Uh, ordering the tour of Italy at the Olive Garden does not make you any more Italian than you think you are. 
so stop it. So, um, I've realized lately that men are creeps. Some of us are just more honest about it than others. And the reason that we're creepy is because that when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we don't see ourselves as the older self. We still see ourselves as, as the 20 year old self. And this hasn't been an issue for me because I've looked 40 since about 16. <laughs> but uh, tonight I'll let you know just how creepy men really are. So when we, when we look at a girl, we always, you know, one day you'll catch a glimpse of some cleavage or maybe some arm, maybe some leg, and we try in our sick heads to put together a puzzle piece of what this girl would look like naked. <laughs> Sorry, I gave away our secret, guys. Sorry. That's why we like the bikini shots, only three puzzle pieces missing. Just easier that way. I've been going to the gym. Uh, that's good guess. I've been going to the gym, been working out. I don't know if I'm getting stronger, but I'm definitely getting bigger. The other day, I, uh, I split my pants in half. Getting in the car, yeah, true story. Um, I did, uh, I did take a police test once. Not that I actually wanted to be a cop. I just got tired of paying for a gym membership. So I showed up to work out. And if you've never taken a police test, it, it's pretty fun. It's the only place where you're encouraged to run from the cops. They stand there and they cheer you on as you struggle through a 10 minute mile. And uh, if you think it sounds like it should be easy, it should be, but what they don't tell you is that there's a donut eating contest before the run. They just want to make sure you can do the job in real life. Um, my wife, my wife thinks that I'm gonna get picked up at the gym. Yeah, that's that's not even the joke. Yeah, I had the same reaction. Yep. So I told her there, there's no way that it's gonna happen. The the 20 year old TikTok fitness queens, they they don't even notice me, and. I'm not rich enough to be anybody's sugar daddy. In fact, the only compliment I got recently was from a 50-year-old gay guy. Not exactly my cup of tea, but it's nice to know that I still have options. <laughs> so, um, tell you guys about a, a time that I threw an epic party back in the day. I, uh, I invited this friend of a friend who asked me if he could bring a few friends. And what's the rule on parties? There's gotta be a party rule book out there somewhere. What's, what's a few friends mean to you? Three. Two, three, yeah. That's, that's how it should be. No, this dude invited 50 German au pairs to my house. It was like, uh, here's how this went down. So nine o'clock, party's supposed to start. 8.50, the doorbell rings. Ding, ding. I open the door and there's a line of people wrapped around my house. It's like one of those 80s movies where, you know, the parents go out of town and then the kid has a party he didn't plan for. So good news, bad news, this was my house. So there were no parents coming back from the airport as I frantically remodeled the house the next morning. But, uh, you know, I mean, the Germans, they were a pretty good time. They, they brought their own booze, so I ended up with more booze. And they brought a lot of good looking girls for the creeps that I call friends to enjoy themselves. But the next day, I, as I'm cleaning out the house, I, I dip into the garbage can and I pull out a hot potato. Someone shit in my garbage can. I don't know how this happened. You know, I tried to think back of the night, like how could this happen? Uh, so I just kept going back and oh, the Germans were asking me, there's the party. Oh, you're at the party. Grab a beer, have a good time. Nine's a party. No, you're at the party. Grab a beer. Nine's a party. Oh, they were looking for the party. I get it. I lost a couple of things that night. I, I lost a couple of friends, including the guy that brought the 50 Germans. I lost the garbage can itself because it just wasn't worth it. And I lost the toilet seat because after 50 asses have been on that toilet seat, that's now a public bathroom. <laughs> My favorite kind of party is a Mexican party. A anybody like Mexican parties? Woo! Yeah, I love Mexican parties. They have them often. Usually a quinceanera is followed by a baby shower. <laughs> oh, 
I didn't say who was baby shower. It could be the mom. She's only 30. I gotta do some math on that joke. Some of you got it. Great job. Uh, but years ago, I, I worked with this guy named Ricardo, and um, we worked for a construction company, so I was in sales, I wore a suit, and Ricardo had a real job, so he looked like a Ricardo would look like. <laughs> so Ricardo comes up to me, and he's like, hey, Gene, do you want to come over to my party? My cousin's house. He's like, hey, you come? And I was like, all right, that's cool, I'll get there. Here's the thing, um, if you're a white guy, and you wear a suit, and you drive a black sedan, do not roll up on a Mexican party. <laughs> Don't do it. They freak the hell out. It's just like in the movies. I, you know, I, I pull up, I stop the car, the music stops, and uh, you know, I, I, I get out, and I don't know what happened. I must have turned green because Ricardo comes out and he's like, "It's okay. Let the green go." <laughs> so. You know, we're, we're having a good time. They start the music. And if you've ever been to a Mexican party, you know that they always play that same, the same songs by that Puerto Rican singer, Elvis Crespo. You guys know Elvis Crespo? Yeah, yeah, he, these guys know what I'm talking about. All the songs sound exactly the same, you know? And, uh, you know, if you're Hispanic and you name your kid Elvis, you know that he's gonna be a singer or a waiter at an all-inclusive resort. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I can't, I can't dance, but th these, uh, the Mexican party songs, they're all the same. It's pretty easy to dance to the Elvis Crespo songs. All you do is you just drink too many beers and you hold it in. It's, the dance goes something like this, you know, it's just... <laughs> yeah, he knows I'm right. I don't know why my hand's up here. The Mexican girls are taller in heels. <laughs> you know. So uh, the party restarts, everything gets going, and one of the dudes, he's had too many cervezas, so he's cross-eyed at this point. One eye is looking at me, the other eye is checking out his future baby mama. She just doesn't know it yet, and he leans into me and he says, when you meet a Spanish girl, you're gonna fall in love. I said, who the hell are you calling a Jew? <laughs> Some of you are wondering, are you a Jew? Depends, are you giving shit away for free? <laughs> So, uh, I love cars, I'm a huge car guy, um, but if you, you know, now is not, not the best time to buy a car. If you miss the wheeling and dealing in the close them and hose them environment of the car dealership, there's another place for you. Anybody been to a mattress store lately? <laughs> no? I didn't know this. Did you guys know this, that you can finance a mattress? Yes. How do you sleep at night knowing that your bed's not paid off? <laughs> The first thing you notice when you walk into the mattress store is that the sales guy is in a suit. Why does a mattress salesman wear a suit? Shouldn't he be wearing pajamas? A dude in a suit standing over me just brings back bad memories. You know, while I try to bed, he just brings back bad memories of a time that I, this guy's dad, this girl's dad stood over me. That was unintentional. Where was I? <laughs> but uh, I don't know why they feel the need to dress like lawyers. You know, it looks like you're putting in long hours at the firm. No, dude, you work at the mattress firm. It's not the same thing. The funniest thing is that the guy in a suit actually doesn't make any decisions regarding the price of the mattress. If you want the real price of the mattress, he's got to call the regional mattress manager. And uh, I could just see this big shot sitting in this little apartment with that Bluetooth cockroach in his ear. <laughs> yep, go for Chad. Take 300 bucks off if he buys today. So then the sales guy tries to close me. He's like, what do I have to do to get you in this bed today? He's like, whoa, man, we just bet. But you can start by taking off that suit. He was trying to close me hard and I just wanted to sleep on it. Okay, I shit you not, a couple of weeks ago, there was a mattress salesman in the audience when I did that joke. So good news, bad news, I'm now banned from the mattress firm. <laughs> Can't go back there. Anybody been to a Victoria's Secret lately? No? Yeah, I've discovered the secret to shopping at Victoria's Secret, and I wear the suit. My goal is just trying not to look creepy. 
Because if you've ever been to a Victoria's Secret, you know that to find anything, you have to dig through the women underwear drawers. And uh, when I wear the suit, at least it looks like I have money. And I found out that creepy with money is so much more acceptable than creepy with no money. <laughs> I know this because as soon as I get in there, all the girls rush up to me and they're like, what can I help you find? What can I help you find? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm looking for something for my wife. They're great. What size is your wife? I'm like, oh, you know, she's like a medium-sized girl. Like, no, that's not it. There's a number and a letter. I'm like, well, shit, I didn't know there was going to be a quiz. <laughs> then it feels like I'm playing Battleship. I'm going to go with a B, 34. <laughs> no, that's not it. The really hard questions come is when you get to the register. First, they want me to open the Victoria's Secret credit card. It's like, okay, cool, what do I get for it? I got 15 bucks off today's purchase. Okay, uh, so you want me to ruin my credit for the price of a sandwich? Great. <laughs> what else you got? And the sales girl goes like, well, you get something special for your birthday. I don't think uh, I'm gonna need something from here for my birthday. I don't think you thought that one through all the way. I, um, then the, the tougher question is, how many gift receipts would you like? How many gift receipts would I like? Take a look at the stuff, it's all wife-sized. How many gift receipts do you think I would like? So just to mess with them, if I have like three bras, I'll be like, I need four gift receipts. Like, why four? In case it doesn't work out with the first same size mistress. So uh, I'm married, it's going well, I think. But uh, any anybody here, any woman here knows that when you're in a good relationship, even when it's good, they try to pressure test that relationship, right? They like to roll out the spike strips just to see if you're paying attention. My wife did this to me the other night. She says to me, who would you be with if we weren't together? <laughs> so ladies, you're welcome to try that later tonight. The guys in the room, if you don't understand what just happened here, or you have a room temperature IQ, let me explain it to you. This is a trick question. You cannot answer this question because any name that you blurt out in the moment of passion can and will be used against you for the rest of your life. If you say something stupid like, I've always thought Sarah's been kind of cute. They know. Every argument will end with, why don't you go be with Sarah? You should have married Sarah then. Yeah. I told this joke to my wife earlier and she says to me, who the fuck is Sarah? <laughs> Thanks guys, you've been great. <laughs> Keep it going for all the comedians tonight. Thank you for coming up. you guys have been amazing. You guys have been an amazing audience. I'll turn it over to AJ to close it up. Yeah, if you want to thank him again, go for it. Yeah. Thank you again. <laughs>